Podcast. Hi, I'm Simon Hartley. And I'm Helen Van Martin. Welcome back to Pep Talks. We are joined by the wonderful Sarah Frasca. Um, Helen, how do you know Sarah? So I had the opportunity uh, probably two years ago to see Sarah as a, key, as a keynote speaker at a huge conference in the US. And certainly we've used a few of her messages um, at different times in our business and they are very apt for today, I think, where we're at uh, with all the challenges. Absolutely. So uh, delighted to get to speak to her again and want to thank her for giving up her time. This will be a, a great, interesting session. Fantastic. I, I mean, Sarah, I've been chatting to a lot of people about the challenges they're going through at the moment, but also that the challenges present opportunities if you can start to become innovative and creative around them. Um, what, what are you seeing so far? Why, why is innovation so critical at the moment? Yeah, thank you again, both Simon and Helen for having me. It's an honor. Um, you know, it's a time when leaders and organizations must find new ways. The old models of the past will no longer give the same results, especially in these challenging times. And creativity becomes that one thing that can help businesses, help leaders as they work through the struggles of today. It's the one thing that will help their teams feel empowered. Um, that creative juice that really needs to be turned on to solve the problems of tomorrow needs to be cultivated at the ground level so that all levels, all roles through an organization are able to really kind of function to find new solutions. So mm -hmm. I, I find it to be uh, one of the most critical components of this very moment. Yeah, and, and I think the way that people approach these, the, the attitude they take is everything. It reminds me of the Jack Sparrow quote, you know, the problem is not the problem, it's your attitude about the problem. <laughs> That's and great. people's perception of it and attitude towards it makes a massive difference, doesn't it? Oh, there's no question. We can sit on our couches and we can binge watch TV and we can mope and moan and um, that will get us nowhere. So the way that my team has liked to approach this, the way that we think about it is what are we doing today that will set us up for success in the future? We are a part of an organization and a part of an industry where we're doing all sorts of events in the world. So of course that is at a complete standstill. We think of this time as, um, you know, as, as leaders in the space or, you know, even as competitors, we want to do the things today that help set us apart in the future. And I, I like to think of it as how can we be proud of this time when we're out of it to say something like, um, boy, I'm grateful for that downtime. It allowed me to do X, Y, and Z. It allowed me to, you know, retool um, part of my organization. It allowed me to think of things in a brand new manner. It allowed me to harness the energy of the people at the ground floor that I'd not talked to in ages. I mean, there's all sorts of possibilities right now. And I think we can either take the approach of, you know, sitting on the couch and moaning. We can also take an approach of optimism and gratitude for this time and this pause in all of our businesses and in all of our lives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where, where have you seen people do this really successfully, where they've really understood the opportunity and made the most of it? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I have so many sales organizations, so many client service organizations that we serve. Um, and, you know, both in my speaking and my workshops and then in the consulting business that I'm a part of, um, which is called Platypus Labs. And, you know, again, there's a lot of sensitivity right now to any sales efforts. It's just not the right time. It is an incredibly um, complicated time globally. So I think more so than ever, we have to approach things with our humanity first. We have to remember that this is not the time for certain activities, but um, it does allow us to touch base with people in new ways than we have in the past. And I have found some of my clients having probably their most meaningful connections with their clients and customers right now. And it's not in the vein of sales. It's not in the vein of, um, you know, trying to drive revenue. It's in the vein of supporting and serving others. And if we can lead from that humanity and that kindness, I think we can find that um, it's even more wonderful than ever to be in the roles that we're in. And um, I've seen a lot of service. I think it's really, you know, wonderful. It's heartwarming, but it's really important too. Yeah, fantastic. Helen, you, you said you've been um, 
inspired by some of the messages. Um, what, what kind of messages have you been using that, that Sarah has been talking about? Um, well, I think the, the one that I remember really clearly was Video Killed the Radio Star. And I think that, that for me now at the moment, the idea behind that was that the mindset is that with the mindset that we can't compete the same way as we always have. So it's thinking in a different way. And as sales organizations, as you say, we have to find another way of helping and communicating. This is one of the reasons we're doing these, these pep talks to try and find ways. And, you know, that, that is so important to keep that communication with our customers and to give something back at this stage mm -hmm. while we all, you know, are, as we talked about earlier this week, we're kind of frozen in time. But what mm -hmm. we do at this time will determine how our competitive advantage coming out of it, just, you know, maybe with some self-learning or, or whatever that is, the way we feel and the way our companies come out of this, I think is really, that, that, that message um, definitely resonated with me. And the second one was the fall down seven times and stand up eight. I think by the end of this, we will have fallen down seven times and that's on a personal and a business level. All of us will try different things, trying our best and keeping our energy levels high and that really is hugely important. So um, both of those, I think, you know, are things that you've touched on and that is what we need at the moment. We need to remind ourselves that they're going to be important. That's great. Yeah. And I'm yeah. tickled that you remembered those. So I'd love to share those with your, with your audience here, but thank you for that. Mm. What, what are some of the most inspirational examples you've seen of people innovating? Well, I mean, I think we see companies all over the globe that are, um, you know, retooling their processes. Um, they are thinking of things in new ways. And again, I, I feel that creativity can be our salvation. We are in tough times. We are in this all together. And, um, you know, I think the only way out of it from a business and even from a, a kind of a human perspective is to think of things differently. So that video killed the radio star philosophy is a mindset that really has been proven in the most innovative people on the planet. And it's the belief that the rules of the past, the traditional methods have to change. Video killed the radio star. We probably all can sing the song, mm -hmm. um, but it was the first music video played on television. And the belief behind this mindset is that we have to outdo the ways of the past. So another way of saying this is version 2.0 has to put version 1.0 out of business. The term that's used is um, kind of, um, it's, purposeful obsolescence, planned yeah. obsolescence. We are constantly trying to put ourselves out of a business or to push our next version to outdo the last, whether it's personally or in our businesses, our brands. Um, so the idea is to continue to move forward. And I actually, I do have a great example of that if you'd like me to share one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. All right, so let me get it ready for you here. So um, the story that I'll share with you is the story of Kevin Bull, and I'm gonna share my screen for you here. Cool. Um, Kevin Bull was a financial planner, but Kevin had a dream, and his dream was to become an American Ninja Warrior. Do you guys know this show? No, I, I, I've got a feeling I need to search it now. It's awesome. So it's played you know, all across the US at least. They even have a kid's version. It's insane. It's one after another, highly physical competitions. The people that make it onto the show, they are former Olympians. They're professional mm -hmm. athletes. They're people that have trained their whole lives. And if you remember, Kevin's a financial planner, so he sits behind a desk every day, right? Yeah. So with enormous grit, with great determination, he finally makes it onto the show. Now that he's on the show, he's facing the challenge of his life and it was called Cannonball Alley. And you can see here, he has to make his way across the stage, holding on to these balls that are hanging from the rafters. 16 of the world's greatest athletes went before Kevin and all 16 failed. So now it's Kevin's turn. He knows he doesn't have the upper body strength of those other competitors. So he executes something exactly opposite of them. He executes what we describe as a judo flip. He literally puts his legs around the last obstacle. He hangs upside down, which springs him to the end. He is the first contestant to ever make it through 
Cannonball Alley. And it's pretty incredible because it shows us that we cannot follow the traditional methods, right? When we are faced with something that is insurmountable, that no one else has been able to find a way through, we oftentimes have to think of the opposite. And I will tell you, the oppositional thinking displayed here by Kevin Bull has been used for ever, really. It's, it's that oppositional thinking that really has fueled progress since the beginning of time. So yeah. in these times of challenge, in these obstacles that we're facing, why not think of things in a brand new, fresh manner? And possibly, like Kevin Bull, we'll find some uh, solutions and some wins. So that's, yeah, that, a, that's one example for you. That's fantastic. Uh, I mean, I, I talk to athletes a lot about um, the Fosbury flop in high jumping. Uh, and at the time, if you'd said to the high jumpers of the day, um, somebody's going to jump over this and they're going to go over with their back arched over the bar. They just said, that's ridiculous. <laughs> That's right. You don't do that's it right. that way. You jump over forwards. Have you not watched high jump? And of course, that's now the way everybody does it. And we think it's just normal. But at the time, you just completely broke the mold by doing the opposite. That's another terrific example. That's great. Fantastic. I mean, these are absolutely inspiring. Um, and as you said, in our, in our most challenging moments, creativity not only gets us out of the challenge, but it potentially finds a better way. That's um, right. And, and, and we've become, like, like you said, really grateful of having it, of having the challenge. That's right. That's yeah. exactly right. Well, I have another example if you'd like to see it. I prepared a couple for your audience yeah, today. Please. I think, you know, Helen talked about the fall seven stand eight philosophy. And this is an ancient Chinese proverb. And it simply is this. I mean, when we have the intention to move forward and to think of new things, to be innovators, to be inventive thinkers. We have to go into it with the mindset that we might fall sometimes, right? 0% failure should never be our goal. It's not attainable. And so we have to have that mental toughness, that mindset that when we do fall, we will pick ourselves back up. We will dust ourselves off. We will have the type of grit and tenacity to persist through adversity when we need to. And that type of positive outlook is necessary, I think, again, today more than ever. So um, I've got a great example for you. Again, I tried to choose some kind of... Um, lighthearted examples because you know in in this time i think it is again easy to look at um you know big brands big companies that do amazing things and i don't mean to undermine their value in the world but mm. there are so many examples of everyday innovators doing the same things changing the world by simply changing their mindset by harnessing that power of creativity that lives inside of them. So again, I wanted to share a couple of examples with you today that I thought embodied that um, type of you know, mentality. So this is a story of Bo Coffrin. So Bo was just an ordinary guy. He had an ordinary job. He had an ordinary income, ordinary education, etc. Lovely fellow, by the way. But um, I mean to say he didn't have Tesla money. He didn't have, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Bill Gates, you know, business. So this gentleman lives in the Oklahoma City area. And he had a couple of goals. His first goal was that he was trying to raise his two little kids. He was trying to be a good father. His second goal, which is something that most of us parents struggle with, he was trying to get these little guys to eat healthier, which again, we know, right? In this fast food era, it's very complicated. They do not want to eat uh, the you know, healthy foods, they want the fast and easy and delicious meals from our fast food chains, etc. cetera. Uh, the third thing that Bo was up against is that he actually lost his own father. So as he was going through the grief of losing his father, it helped him to remember how important it was to make this connection with his children as they grew. So he tried to do all sorts of things. He started a reward system to get them to eat healthier, which flopped. He <laughs> tried to build a consequences chart, which again, failed miserably. He kept trying more and more things. He was really trying hard to get them to eat healthy. And every single one of his attempts failed miserably. One day, as he was packing their lunches for school, he got an idea. He remembered how much his little daughter loves the American Girl dolls. Do you guys know these dolls? Yes. 
Yes. They're amazing. They're so cute and they're, they're really fun. So when his daughter got to the lunchroom that day and she opened up her lunchbox, this is what she saw. She saw an amazingly themed meal um, full of you know, mm -hmm. color and, and fun. It was super creative, but it was also full of very healthy components. So, I mean, obviously she had a huge smile on her face. She got to share this with her friends. When Bo said that she got home that day, he said she gave him the hug of his life. Oh. So naturally he did it again, right? This time for his son. So now you have these two kids opening their lunch boxes in the lunchroom. You've got kids gathered around them, watching them as they open and unfold their creation for the day. Pretty soon those kids start telling their parents and the parents start calling Bo. They too want the opportunity to make a connection with their children and to get their kids to eat healthier foods. So Bo does what anyone would do. He launches a website. Being of little means, he opened a free WordPress site, but it was enough to give him a spot to put a picture and to list the instructions. You can yeah. see these are not chef created meals. These are meals any of us could do with the right creativity, right? So he posts pictures and instructions, allowing people to uh, recreate these. And hundreds of thousands of people flocked to his site overnight. So many that the next thing that happened was incredible and Bo did not make a single sales call. But the big brands started calling him, General Mills, Kraft, Nike, and the like. They wanted to put their brand next to his creative solution for family. It's pretty amazing, right? I mean, mm -hmm. he was able to serve families building this creative business, but he also ended up able to leave his full-time job and do this full-time. So this is what he does now. He has lunchboxdad.com. And uh, I don't know about you. I mean, I, I can relate as a mom of five. I think this is tremendous. It's just so creative. But this is what Bo did in his grief-stricken, frustrated dad moment. He was able to harness that creativity and he was able to pick himself up time after time and say, I got to keep finding a way. I've got to find a solution. I can do this. And that's that philosophy embodied. That's that fall seven stand eight mindset. So hopefully you enjoyed this example as well. But um, again, everyday innovation is, is right for the taking. We can do it. Absolutely. That's how fantastic. Harness, how do you harness innovation? You know, in this time when we are all doing video conferencing and it's not the whiteboard method that we normally do, you know, we're trying to be creative. I mean, it, it, how do you harness innovation at this point where we're mm. in a new working environment? What, what would your, what would you say to people? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I have a couple of steps, honestly, that I like to take. And the first of which is um, really around learning. I think we can do our best work when we are inspired. And there's no way to um, just sit at your desk and find that inspiration. Most people don't find their best ideas sitting at their desk. But to go out and read articles, to stand outside for a few minutes, to play with children. I mean, there are so there are so many wonderful places that we do get our best ideas. And we have to especially now be creative even in finding those points of inspiration, whether it's reading books, listening to podcasts. Again, talking to your five-year-old will give you ideas that you never thought possible. They may or not may not work, but it'll at least start the sparks. Um, so my first, my first area is really to keep learning. I mean, we can't stop learning ever, um, but to find points of inspiration now that help us through this time, I think is important. Um, my second is that we can continue to sharpen our skills right now. We have to find ways to practice. And, you know, again, I'm in a, um, in a role where I do a lot of speaking to corporations across the world. And I, I can practice now just as anyone can, um, you know, new stories, new jokes, new ways of telling things that may inspire people now and in the future. Um, so we can't stop sharpening our skills. I would like to emerge better after this than I am right now. And I think if we have that philosophy, um, we can utilize this time to the best of our ability. 
Um, the other one I would say is just practicing that gratitude. I mean, I think, you know, I, I am truly grateful for the clients that I have, for my family, for the organization that I serve, um, and my colleagues. I mean, I just, I wake up every morning and it's like, all right, there's new things to be done today. And I, and I wake up and kick the sheets off every day. So, um, I think if you have a little gratitude in your heart each day, that can go a long way. Um, the last one I think is just recharging. I think we would be remiss if we didn't allow ourselves a moment too. I mean, even though I have, I, I am probably an eternal optimist. I, I, it's very hard to get me down, but I also have down moments just as anyone does. And I think if we can take a moment and pause and reflect and, and allow ourselves the moments of depression or anxiety or just fear. I mean, that's okay. We're all humans. Those are human emotions. But if we let it stifle us and let it, um, you know, really sink our feet in cement, then we're doing a disservice to our families and our colleagues, etc. So I think we have to just, you know, allow those moments and then push right past them. So I don't know if this is helpful, but that's, that's how I look at it. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much. I, I, I was talking to a, a colleague earlier who, um, I was just sharing some of the observations that I've uh, taken in the past few years working with world-class leaders. And one of the ways that I see that they help unlock creativity and innovation is just by asking great questions. Mm. And for me, that the great questions are like the key in the lock. And you, you, you put that key in the lock and turn it, and all of a sudden there's this untapped potential that comes flying out. And so many leaders have reflected afterwards and said, I didn't realize how creative they were. I didn't realize how innovative they were. I didn't realize how capable they were. Um, and that seems to be the, the little spark almost like lighting the, lighting the touch paper, as I call it. And then That's you see this explosion wonderful. of creativity. Sarah, thank you very, very much. Oh. I wish we had more time. Um, we can always do this again. <laughs> we can do it again anytime, you two. I love it. Fantastic. Um. <laughs> thank you very, very much. Helen, thank you very, very much. Thank, thank you. you all. We will see you next week. And, uh, and thank you very much. Join us again on Pep Talks.